My name is Professor Tara Rampal. I am a consultant anaesthetist. I have specialist interest in prehabilitation. I'm also a chief medical officer of Kenton Medway Prehab. This is a community-based service which is available to all residents of Kenton Medway who've been diagnosed with cancer, and this is powered by Quest Prehab. Hello, I am Mr. Roberto Lafacajigas, the operations lead for Kenton Medway Prehab, and today we're gonna to cover the basics of prehabilitation. I'm gonna hand it over to Tara, who's gonna to explain to you what prehabilitation is. So let us explore what prehabilitation is. We are all familiar with the concept of rehabilitation. You have fractured your arm, uh, you have your treatment for the fracture, then you go and attend physiotherapy clinics to get the strength back in the arm after the bone has healed and get back the normal function of the arm. Now, prehabilitation strongly derives from the principle of rehabilitation and take it upstream. It is a complex multimodal intervention which happens before a treatment. And the treatment usually is for cancer or for a major operation. And this consists of physical, nutritional, psychological, and lifestyle optimization of people who have to undergo treatment for cancer. And it's irrespective of the treatment that you undergo for cancer. It could be radiotherapy, chemotherapy, surgery, immunotherapy. All of these can be potentially, they can wreak havoc on the body. They can have a problem such as decrease in your functional capacity. They can lead to loss of appetite. They can lead to muscle breakdown. They can leave you more exposed to infections. So if we increase the reserve, it's like preparing for a marathon. If you increase the reserve, increase the resilience of the body so that when there is a challenge upcoming, you are ready to take the challenge. You have an earlier recovery. You go back to the quality of life you enjoyed, whether that's chasing your grandchildren, whether that's going for a walk with your partner on the beach. And also, if unfortunately you have a complication as a result of the treatment, you have enough reserve and strength to call upon within your body to meet with that challenge and come out. This is what prehabilitation aims to do. And this prehabilitation has been gaining global acceptance in the medical community. There is a lot of evidence which is getting published from single center trials, that means one single service which is collecting data of the patients in front of it, from many centers trials which are international centers collaborating with each other, offering the intervention, and we are beginning to see. I'm very heartened to say majority of this data actually comes from people who have had operations for colorectal cancer, which is bowel cancer. Uh, the evidence here comes that people who undergo prehabilitation rather than just rehabilitation actually have fewer complications and have earlier recovery as well. I shall now hand over to my colleague Roberto, who will be going in great detail about the components of prehabilitation. Depending on the kind of prehabilitation program that is available to you, you will find that there are uh, one or many components. When there is only one component, like nutrition or maybe physical activity, we would call this unimodal prehabilitation. When you have a number of components coming together into the program, it would be uh, multimodal. The most typical multimodal prehabilitation program is called the uh, tree uh, prehabilitation or the tree modal approach, uh, which uh, gets together physical activity, nutrition, and also psychologic support. Now, when we talk about physical activity, uh, we would have a couple of distinguished uh, components within the same component, which is uh, the resistance exercise or strength exercise and the aerobic component. So strength or resistance exercise is that those kind of exercises that help you building muscle and gaining strength. And the aerobic component implies, implies more exercises that actually improve uh, your cardiovascular system, so how your heart and your lungs work. When it comes to the nutrition side of things, some of the things that are uh, highlighted is having enough uh, protein in your diet to make sure you can support the adaptations and the benefits of the exercise. Uh, also, protein is going to help you recover from, uh, let's say, an operation. It's going to help your muscles and your tissue recover because protein is going to give you the building blocks. Um, something quite important as well is trying to avoid um, processed food and trying to prioritize real food cooking from the scratch whenever possible, and trying to make sure that you have the healthiest food possible. Sometimes, as part of a program, 
uh, you will find a dietitian and the dietitian, depending on your situation, may recommend you to have uh, something called build-up drinks, which are the drinks that are easy to drink. They provide you with energy, nutrients, and also a good amount of protein. Also, you may find that depending on your situation, your dietitian may recommend you to go on a low fiber diet before the operation. When it comes to the psychologic support side of things, uh, you may have available things like CBT, which is Cognitive Behavioral Therapy. Uh, this therapy aims to um, give you resources so you can actually deal with the anxiety that may be caused as a consequence of being waiting for the operation or uh, caused by the, the treatment overall. Now, there are some um, lifestyle modifications that can happen during the prehabilitation program. If you smoke, you'll be recommended to stop smoking. And if you drink too much alcohol, uh, that would be more than 14 units a week, then you would be recommended to reduce the amount of alcohol you drink and also follow the recommendations to spread alcohol evenly during the week and try to have some days off. So really, as you can see, given the many components in the prehabilitation program where it, when it is multimodal, uh, almost anybody can benefit from prehabilitation. If you cannot do exercise, you can always do something about maybe your diet, trying to make sure you have enough protein. Um, if you are not good with uh, one of the aspects, you can always have something to work around. So based on your situation, you will find that you need more or less support uh, when it comes to your prehabilitation program. And that's why prehabilitation is so important to be personalized to your needs. As we've just heard, prehab is a complex intervention and there are many, many facets to it. It is crucial for us all to recognize, both as healthcare professionals, as patients, and as family members supporting those patients, that personalized and individualized interventions are far more impactful and bear better clinical results than generic interventions. Within this framework we have for prehabilitation, we need to individualize the framework that we'll be offering a particular patient. And it is crucial that there is monitoring happening. So when you get diagnosed with cancer, we don't really have time. We don't have six months, two years to get our fitness levels really high up. We need interventions that are able to make a visible, discernible impact within a few weeks so the treatment can get started. And therein comes in the personalization element and the monitoring element, because if you're meeting your targets of prehabilitation, then they can be modified, they can be altered in a prompt fashion to push you that much further. And similarly, if the intervention that has been designed for you is proving too challenging, then it can be altered again in order to keep the engagement so that people don't just give up and do not comply with it as well. So you may think that this is a wonderful intervention and there is growing evidence and we know there's a functional decline in people with bowel cancer when it comes to physical activity. So why is it not available to everyone? And I think this is a question far bigger than the remit of this conversation. But a lot of this is boils down to resources. And the more we offer this service, the more the people participate in this service, the more scientific data we have to convince the decision makers that such a valuable intervention should be available to all. We know that there have been studies done which have highlighted that health-related quality of life distinctly improves with prehabilitation. And the national government has started a huge survey which looks at quality of life in people with cancer, which offers us a lot of hope, a lot of optimism that soon anyone who gets diagnosed with bowel cancer will be able to access this service. However, at this point, it's not available everywhere. And if you do not have the facilities or access to these services where you live, there are still things you can do to get yourself stronger, both physically and mentally, to take the challenge of the treatment on. So what can you do if you don't have prehabilitation available to you? Well, there are always things you can do on your, on your own. When it comes to physical activity, you are recommended to do at least 150 minutes of exercise per week. Now, the intensity of this exercise should be moderate, which means that when you do the exercise, you should, be feel a bit of, you should be feeling a bit out of breath, but at the same time, you should be able to keep a conversation with somebody next to you. So this may sound complicated, but it just implies that if you go out every day for a 30 minutes walk, you'll be already doing this. In addition to the aerobic exercise, you are recommended to do at least a couple of sessions of strength exercise per week. So you don't have to go to the gym if you don't want. You can always have some simple equipment at home or even elastic bands. 
When doing resistance training or strength exercise, you should always try to use uh, as much muscle mass as possible using large muscles. Um, if you can do exercises like uh, sit to stands or squats, things uh, or exercises that imply pushing and pulling with your arms, those are probably going to be the most beneficial ones. When talking specifically about bowel cancer, you may find different treatments that could be radiotherapy, chemotherapy or surgery or a combination of those. Now, surgery is very traumatic to the body and it is in your best interest to exercise those core muscles and also the pelvic floor muscles because that is going to help you recovering after the operation. The most important thing is that you don't get overwhelmed with all this information. You can always incorporate these sort of ideas around physical activity slowly into your routine and you can build up slowly and progressively. If you don't have any equipment available uh, at home or you are not familiar with any of these uh, exercises, uh, just try to think out of the box. If you are home, uh, you can always use, for instance, your wall. You can lean against your wall and you can do some push-ups against it. While you are in the kitchen and you are mainly maybe uh, boiling some water for your tea, maybe you can have a, a can of beans and do some, some uh, biceps curls. Um, if you are maybe brushing your teeth, you can also try to have a, a bit of a balance exercise, uh, being on one your, or your feet. Uh, so yes, try to think about all those things you can do around the house, even while watching the telly, that are going to be very beneficial. The idea is trying to incorporate exercise into your lifestyle slowly and progressively. When considering what to do with your diet, some very simple tip is trying to get uh, enough amount of protein. Um, and this can be a bit complicated to do. But a very simple uh, advice would be trying to have protein in every one of your meals. So if you have breakfast, lunch and dinner, try to have a fair amount of protein in all of those meals and, and you can evenly distribute it during the day. Now, of course, if your dietitian has given you any advice, please follow your dietitian's advice. So we have spoken about uh, physical activity and uh, nutrition. Uh, now, what can you do when it comes to reducing anxiety levels? Something very simple and very effective could be going online and getting an app that can give you some mindfulness exercises. After seeing the many things you can do on your own, I would like to invite you to look for telehealth services. If you don't have anything available local to you, you can still look for virtual programs that are delivered online. So telehealth considers of providing healthcare services remotely, and it has many modalities through which it can be provided. That may range from a video call offered from the hospital, it could be Zoom or Skype calls, it could be even a telephone call followed by sending across the papers, the questionnaires to people via the classic standard post or the email. Teleprehab was a necessary adaptation. When the COVID-19 pandemic unfortunately hit us, a lot of prehab services had to go virtual because people with cancer were classified as vulnerable to increase complications as a result of the pandemic. In order to be able to offer this service to patients, many services like ours went virtual. They went via teleprehab pathways and have carried on doing that because teleprehabilitation has helped us go beyond the geographical barriers and increase the accessibility of people who would otherwise may not have been able to access these services, whether that's because of um, cost of travel to the hospital, whether that's because of caring responsibilities or many other such restrictions, not being able to drive. Please, telehealth services are a very strong and impactful tool in the arsenal of quality of life services that we offer to people. And we would encourage you to inquire about them and make use of them to get yourself fitter before a treatment. As we get older, we all experience physiological changes. This is loss of muscle strength, loss of functional capacity, vulnerability to infections. What we have seen from modeling produced from studies is that this aging process is accelerated in people with cancer. And this is due to a multitude of factors. And while there are some factors we can't do anything about, such as the type of cancer or the age that you've been diagnosed with, there are factors which contribute towards accelerated aging and cancer that we can actively do things through prehabilitation. These are things such as loss of muscle strength, physical inactivity, anxiety and depression, poor appetite, poor nutritional intake. Not only do these specifically benefit people with cancer to prevent increased accelerated aging, 
but they also link in with secondary prevention of cancer. Lifestyle modifications such as increased physical activity, smoking cessation and alcohol moderation imbibed during the time of prehabilitation can modify people's behavior for a long time and prevent further cancer from occurring. Thank you very much for your time and attention. And if you have any further questions, please visit the Bowel Cancer UK webpage.